Hey guys, in this video, we're going to discuss how to join your Azure storage or file share to a domain controller, to your Active Directory domain controller. So the first thing we're going to start with is configuring our VNet DNS so we can utilize the domain controller DNS. And then we're going to create a group policy for the file share. And then we're going to go ahead and create the file share in Azure. Then we're going to go through the process of joining it to the domain. And then the last thing we're going to do is map the SMB file share on our domain controller. So let's get to it. And I'm going to go to my virtual network. So I'm going to type here virtual VNet. This is my virtual network that I'm deploying the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, AVDN. And I'm going to go to DNS and the domain controller that we have has an IP address off. Let's go take a look at it quickly. If we go to virtual machines here. This is my domain controller. And the IP address is 10.4, 16.10.4. So that's what we want to use for a DNS server. And we're going to save this. So the first thing we want to do is uh, create a new OU where we're going to join this uh, file share that we're going to create and apply some policies to it. So I'm going to say create new OU. You can name it whatever you want. What I'm going to name it is uh, no computer password expiration is what we want to do here is basically uh, when we join this, uh, this storage to the uh, domain, by default, the password for this device will re expire and renew every 30 days, and that's just going to disrupt the connectivity. So I'm going to apply a policy that would basically stop this from happening every 30 days. And this way, basically, we're going to have uh, a continuous, uh, continuous, uh, no disruptive uh, environment. I'm going to right click this uh, new OU that I created. And uh, I want to make sure that I'm on advanced features here so I can uh, get the, to the attributes of this uh, OU. I'm going to go to attribute ed editor and I'm going to look for the distinguished name and I'm going to copy this and put it on the side because we're going to need it. Next, I'm going to go to group policy management and just create a new basically a uh, group policy. You can call it whatever you know you want. Again, I'm going to call it the same thing here. And then we're going to now edit this policy so we can set it up. So we're going to go to computer configurations, policies, windows settings, security settings, security options, and go to domain member, maximum machine account password age, and basically set this to zero. So this way it would never expire. And simply now link this to the OU where, which, which we created basically. So I am going to the OU and I'll right click it and I say link an existing GPO and just pick it. And it's linked now to the OU we have that we're gonna join the uh, file share to. Now the next thing we're gonna go ahead and create the storage account. So we'll go to storage accounts and create new one. This is my subscription. And again, this is my resource group. You can choose to create a new one if you need to. You can uh, name the storage account whatever you want. I'm going to call it uh, Imager Labs. Or you know what? Let's call it AVD Profile 24. I am in the East US, so I'm going to keep it here. And that's an I. 
we're gonna go with premium this is very recommended for uh, low late latency and we're gonna create a file share uh, in production you might want to make it geo redundant I am doing it for, for this lab as uh, locally redundant but in uh, in uh, production you might want to do it zone redundant for high availability click next we're gonna leave this uh, just uh, on the defaults now for networking really this is is uh, you do not want to enable your storage account to be accessible from outside or from anywhere only internally because you're uh, you basically have connectivity to your domain controller and you want everything to be internal so we're going to disable public access to this uh this endpoint and create a private endpoint and what this does is creates a uh, a local IP address in your in your subnet to the storage account. In this way, we can basically access it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a private endpoint. I'm gonna call it AVD Private Endpoint PEP, and that's again a file share. We're going to pick our virtual network in our subnet. By the way, if you need some help with uh, creating virtual networks and subnets and such, I do have other videos in my, in my uh, channel. You can uh, search for them or I can leave a link below for, for this as well so you can uh, do it. We're going to integrate this with DNS because we do want to be able to access it by DNS. So, so we're going to leave this as default and say OK. And this is going to take a couple of minutes. All right, so it's already created. Uh, next, data protection. We're going to leave this as is. Encryption, we're going to leave it as is. We're going to review. And we're going to create. Now pause and come back once it's done. Okay, the deployment is done. We'll go to the storage account. And what we need to do is basically create a file share. So we will go with new file share. I'm going to call it users profile. Now the uh, provisioned capacity, it depends on what you need. This is a uh, one terabyte. I'm going to make it maybe 250 gigabyte if they allow me up or even less I'll make it 100 since this is a lab but um, so you get the idea of uh, basically this is uh, going to be shared with all users if you have 10 users that would be using virtual desktop and you set a, set a one terabyte uh, all users would be sharing this one terabyte and so on and we can uh, we will be uh, uh, creating policies to uh, restrict what, how, how much um, usage they can use what's the maximum of uh, gigabytes they can use by default it's set up to 30 30 gigabytes for fs logics but we'll go through it so the protocol we need smb it is a good idea to enable backup this would enable backup for the profiles i am not going to enable it now but you can uh, no, in production, it's a good idea to, to uh, basically do it. Go ahead and create it. And I'll pause and come back once it's done, or maybe it's done already. Okay, so at this point, our file share is uh, ready. And uh, however, we do not have access to it. So let's go ahead and uh, change the access we created. So, so what I do here is enable from selected virtual networks and IP addresses. And we're not going to add anything here. We're just basically, this is the firewall from external. And we're telling it just to enable it from selected virtual net networks and IPs. And this is private. So we only need to enable it, enable the firewall, but we do not have to specify anything. And I'm going to show you the private endpoint that we created. So if I go to it and I go to DNS configurations, as you can see, this is the uh, fully qualified domain name, and this is the uh, the uh, private IP ad address. It gave it .7. 
and this is basically our URL. If I ping now this uh, this uh, address from here, as you can see, it's already pinging and it's given a private uh, IP address. So we're good. Now, if, okay. So at this point, we need to join this this uh, storage account, our Active Directory domain, and we do have. Microsoft uh, page that tells us how to do it here. I'm going to leave a link to this before, below. Now, there are some prerequisites that you should have. Please make sure you have all these installed and ready before you start doing anything. You can, you, you'd also have to download the high, AZ hot files hybrid module. It's a zip file. I already downloaded it and I unzipped it and it's here. Those three files. And the last thing you need to do uh, scroll down, copy all this, and paste it in uh, 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 a PowerShell, ISE PowerShell. And I already did here. And we're gonna have to fill out some uh, some values basically here, uh, which I already uh, pre-filled so we can save some time. So if we look at this, we're gonna start running this. So, First, we set the execution policy. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then make sure you are in the folder, in the, in the path where you have the uh, script uh, downloaded. So it's, in my case, it's ctemp az files. That's the one we downloaded from the page, the zip file. So I went there to that uh, path and run this command. And now run this command. And now we need to connect to uh, Azure. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, enter the credentials, username and password. Okay, and now we're logged in. Now uh, we need to fill out some information here. If you look at the main page that I gave you earlier, which is this one. So as you can see here, it says, get enter your subscription ID. I already pre-filled it. If you need your subscription ID, you can go to Azure and go to subscriptions. And this is the subscription ID. Next, you need the resource group name. And that's where your storage account is. So my storage account is resource group is under M Azure Labs. So I put it in there. Storage account name. This is my storage account name. And then this is the Sam's account name. This is basically the domain admin account you're going to be using to join to your active directory. In my case, I have it as Elmaz. This is the user. The domain account type, if you open the uh, Microsoft page here, they're giving you two options, computer account or service account. And I'm putting it as a computer account, so just delete the other one. The OU distinguished name, this is the one we got from the attribute attributes uh, editor earlier from uh, from here from Active Directory for this OU. And here's the distinguished name, so I copied it and just put it in there. And the encryption type, they're giving you two options. And they recommend going with AES-256. So I'm going with this one. Here it is. And basically, those are the values. I'm going to go ahead and run these just to uh, pre-fill the values for Azure. And now we're going to select our subscription ID. And we're going to go ahead and run the join domain name. Okay, looks like we are joined and successful. You can, it's, the last thing it says, you can run debug storage off just to make sure you are in good shape, basically run this, this command. And it's checking connectivity and everything. So this is making sure also that uh, port 445 is open between the storage account and our computer so we can manage it. Yeah, if it's not, Basically, you'll get error and you'll see what's the error. 
port 445 has to be open between this machine you're you're mapping the uh the storage to and the uh storage account so i'm going to pause until this runs it's going to take some time and then uh i'm going to come back all right so now that we're done we verified everything is good if we go to uh, our ou which is the uh no computer expiration i can see that this has been joined as a computer account so at this time we need to set up some uh, permission access on the storage account so what we need to do is uh, go to the storage account and to the and then we're going to go to file share click on the file share that we have and then we go to access control IIM. And then we're gonna click on add role assignment, or rather we can do it in an easier way from here, add role assignment. And then we're gonna search for SMB elevated. Uh, uh, so so this, is, uh, this is the permission, it's SMB elevated. Uh, contributor and who do we want to assign this to this is your global admins that would be managing this so in my case i'm just going to add for example the user l tree l maze I'm, I'm sorry and l maze is already actually uh an owner on this account but i'm just showing you if you want to add someone in your uh, organization as a global admin and you just want to assign them to manage the share you can so that's how we do it so now at this point i am ready to uh, actually map my network drive my file share and start giving permissions on it as well so if i go to overview overview under the user profile file share i can copy the fqdn to map it so i'll go to map network drive And I'm just gonna change this whack to the other one and here like this and I click finish and as you can see now we mapped it now we have the user profiles in here and we can actually start doing some permissions on it 